Hi, I'm Mark Breitfeldt, just one of around 2.2 million people who are expected to vote this year. History tells us that the freedom and democracy we have today was fought for and won many years ago by brave men and women, many of whom paid the ultimate price with their lives. I have a question for you. Does it concern you that these hard-won freedoms are being taken from us little by little? Our major assets sold off without our permission? Our taxes taken and given to perfectly healthy people who are well able to work? Family devalued by bad legislation? Government, those in the beehive, intruding into our homes and telling us how to raise our children? The signing of legislation that binds our nation to external agreements? Without our say-so. Our freedom of speech at risk to such an extent that I'm not even sure that placing this DVD on YouTube is actually legal anymore. Here's a summarised quote from the United States Declaration of Independence. Governments are instituted amongst men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter it, or abolish it, and to institute new government, But when a long train of abuses occur, pursuing a design to reduce the people under absolute despotism, it is the people's right, it is their duty, to throw off such government and provide new guards for their future security. Time and again, New Zealand governments over the last 30 years or more have gone against the wishes of the very people they were supposedly representing. To my mind, the time has come to either throw off the type of government we've had or change it so that our elected representatives serve the New Zealand people, not the other way around. My proposal to accomplish this change in government is what I call the One Bill. And this is how it reads. If the majority of New Zealand voters are against it, proposed legislation may not proceed into law. Second half, if the majority of New Zealand voters are against it, existing legislation must be repealed. Some past issues that have been railroaded through by past and present government without our permission are the Electoral Finance Act, the Anti-Smacking Bill, the Civil Unions Bill, legalisation of prostitution, lowering the drinking age, sale of our state-owned assets, signing of United Nations resolutions, signing of the Kyoto Agreement, formation of New Zealand World Wilderness Regions. If you're anything like me, you may agree with some of these, but have serious concerns about others. The point is that the ordinary New Zealander has never had a vote on any of these important issues. If we were a true democracy, we should have had the final say in all of them, since they affect us all. Under the existing system of government, we vote in a government once every three years, but after the elections, they're accountable only to themselves. This must change. Hence, the one bill, which, if passed into law, will guide our elected representatives, not just at election time, but during their term of office. No longer will the people of New Zealand be subject to unwelcome legislation by rogue governments. So let's have another look at the one bill. If the majority of New Zealand voters are against it, proposed legislation may not proceed into law. If the majority of New Zealand voters are against it, existing legislation must be repealed. I call it the one bill. One bill to rule them all. One bill to bind them. One bill to bring them all and in the beehive guide them. We, the people of New Zealand, will guide our politicians through the one bill. I propose three stages of commitment to democracy and invite each political party to state where they stand on true democracy. Stage one. We believe New Zealand should be a democracy. This means that government should derive its power from the consent of the governed and, as much as possible, the will of the New Zealand people should come before the will of the governing party or parties. Stage two. 
We agree referenda should be binding, since they accurately reflect the will of the New Zealand people, the ones whom Parliament is supposed to represent. We are happy to lower to 100,000 the number of signatures required to force a referendum to make it easier for the people of New Zealand to have a say on issues of concern to them. Finally, stage three. In principle, we agree with the one bill and will work towards its implementation as best we can. All parties should have no problem agreeing to stage one. I'll be voting for a party willing to at least go to stage two, binding referenda, and hopefully to stage three, full implementation of the one bill. I'm hoping you'll join me, a groundswell of New Zealand voters who may say, I'm not sure who I will vote for, but it will be a party that supports the one bill. It has been said that all it takes for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. In New Zealand's case, all it takes for democracy to fail is for the New Zealand voter to do nothing about it. Here's your chance to do something about it. Are you willing to be counted amongst those who will vote for the one bill? Will the voice of democracy in New Zealand be a lamb's bleat or a lion's roar? It's up to you. Passing this on to your friends would be half your job done. Voting for a party that supports the one bill or the party closest to it, would complete the job, as far as you're concerned. Fellow New Zealanders, it is not just your right to preserve democracy in New Zealand, it is your duty to do so. Don't let future generations of New Zealanders say that during the time in which we could still do something to preserve our freedoms, we failed to do so. Stand and be counted. Vote for the One Bill. One bill to rule them all, one bill to bind them, one bill to bring them all and in the beehive guide them.